This video is looking at the interaction of different female hormones in the role of the oestrus cycle. Uh, we can see at the beginning of the oestrus cycle, just after the uterus lining has been shed, the level of progesterone is low. Progesterone inhibits the hormone FSH, so a low level of progesterone means that we can have an increased level of FSH, as we can see here. The role of FSH is to cause the follicle in the ovary to develop, therefore developing and maturing the egg. FSH also has a relationship with oestrogen in that FSH causes oestrogen to be secreted, it stimulates the production of oestrogen. We can see that here as FSH is increasing, our oestrogen levels also start to increase. Oestrogen has a relationship with FSH in that as more oestrogen is being produced, oestrogen will start at low levels to inhibit FSH. And we can see that here as we have more oestrogen, the level of FSH starts to drop. The role of oestrogen is also to start to build up the uterus lining. We can see that here, the oestrogen is increasing, so the uterus lining is also increasing. This relationship between oestrogen and FSH is known as a negative feedback loop. In other words, FSH stimulates the production of oestrogen, and when oestrogen hits a certain level, it will reduce the amount of FSH, it will inhibit it. Up until a certain point where we see oestrogen hitting a certain critical level where it then starts to stimulate the production of FSH rather than inhibit it. By stimulating FSH, FSH then causes a greater production of oestrogen. We see that here, the oestrogen level starting to rise. As well as causing the uterus lining to start to thicken, Oestrogen also causes the production of the hormone LH. We can see as we have this high level of oestrogen, so it causes a high level of LH. This is known as a positive feedback loop because the LH causes a greater secretion of oestrogen and therefore causing a greater secretion of LH and so on and so on and so on. This increased level of LH is important. LH's job is to make sure that the egg is released, ovulation. This happens in humans around about day 14. Be careful in some of the exam questions, they will try to trick you by giving you different organisms. Different organisms ovulate at different days, different days of the month, not just day 14. During this time at ovulation, we see the follicle is very well developed. After ovulation, the follicle starts to break down. Notice that as it breaks down, the level of oestrogen drops because oestrogen is developed, oestrogen is secreted rather, from the ovary, from the follicle. So as the follicle starts to dis disintegrate, so the level of oestrogen drops. At this point, we see the follicle developed into something called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is responsible for progesterone secretion. And we can see the progesterone levels at this part here where the... Uh, follicle starts to break down, the corpus luteum is starting to develop, the progesterone levels start to increase. Progesterone's job is to maintain the thick uterus lining. We can see that here, the uterus lining is kept nice and thick, ready for implantation if the ovum is fertilized and turns into a zygote, ready to develop into an embryo. Progesterone also inhibits the FSH, which means that FSH levels are therefore low. This is important because we don't want another egg starting to be matured, starting to develop when we've got one already travelling along the fallopian tubes already, possibly going to be fertilised. We don't need multiple eggs being released. Similarly, you can see that the LH levels are low. Again, this is because we don't want, obviously, further ovulation, further release of eggs, one egg at a time. If fertilisation and implantation into the uterus lining do not happen, then the corpus luteum starts to break down, which means that the progesterone levels start to drop, the uterus lining is not being maintained, and you can see that it starts to be shed towards the end of the oestrus cycle, and then the whole cycle starts up again.